Ever wondered why you look like your parents? Well, not as old, obviously, but still similar. It's all in the DNA. In the next few minutes, we're going to look at cell division. Using this amazing mechanism you've developed from a combination of your mum and dad's gametes. Here is a typical cell. This is the nucleus. Zooming in, we can see the chromosomes. And the chromosomes are made from long molecules of DNA. Watch CSI, the bill, silent witness, and they are always looking for DNA. So why is it so important? Because each person has unique DNA. Unless you are an identical twin, in which case you and your twin share the same DNA. So you better hope they're not a serial killer. So what is DNA? It's a large complex molecule that carries the genetic code that determines just about everything about you. Hair colour, eye colour, hatred of broccoli, maybe, maybe not. DNA is shaped like a double helix, like a ladder that's been twisted into a spiral. A very small ladder. Short sections of DNA are called genes. Each gene has a specific purpose. It has the instructions for making a particular amino acid. These join in a particular order, again controlled by the genes to form proteins. So genes control proteins, which is how living things are made. Let's just go over that again. Inside each cell nucleus are chromosomes that are made from DNA. DNA contains genes. Each gene has a code to make a protein. The protein is made out of amino acids that are joined together in the order determined by the code. The proteins go on to make living things that go on to live happily ever after. Oh. No, wait, but how do these living things grow from single cells? When living things grow or repair damage, they need to make new cells. How do they do this? Answer, mitosis. A cell can divide into two. These two new cells are identical to the original one. They have the same DNA. It's a five-step program. First, we take a parent cell. Step two, the chromosomes in its nucleus make identical copies of themselves. Step three, the chromosomes line up in the center. Step four, the copies separate and move apart. And step five, the cell splits into two, forming what we call two daughter cells. Each one has a copy of the original parent cell DNA. <gasps> so this cell has two new daughters, except there's not really a parent cell anymore. Hmm. The process can repeat. Each new cell dividing into two. Cells can multiply this way, creating identical copies every time. This is how living organisms grow or replace damaged cells. Cloning. It's been around for longer than you think. <coughs> Plant microorganisms and even some animals can reproduce just by making copies of themselves in this way. Feels like cheating. No awkward first dates, no hairdos, no fashionable trousers. It's asexual reproduction. As no new DNA has been introduced, the offspring are genetically identical to the parents. Now, what if you want offspring that are not identical to the parents? That would be useful. Variation, adaptability, survival of the species, new species, evolution, and let's face it, the thrill of the chase. Well, we need to know a bit more about chromosomes. They generally come in pairs. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nucleus of each cell of your body. Quite a squeeze. The fact that chromosomes come in pairs plays a big part in the other type of cell division. Meiosis. This is part of sexual reproduction. Meiosis only happens in the reproductive organs and produces special cells called gametes, eggs and sperm. Meiosis ends in the pairs of chromosomes getting split. The result is that egg and sperm cells have only 23 single chromosomes, not the usual 23 pairs. That's half the genetic information needed to create a new person, animal or plant. Coincidence? No. Fertilisation happens when the male and female gametes join together. Their 23 single chromosomes pair up to give the full 23 pairs. So this newly formed cell contains a unique mix of chromosomes from each parent. Sexual reproduction in this way introduces variation into the genetic code. The particular mix of the two sets of DNA is unique. So how does meiosis work? Back to the reproductive organs. The 23 chromosome pairs start by copying themselves and double up. Then sections of DNA get swapped between similar chromosome pairs. The swapping of DNA is where the genetic variation comes from. 
Then the cell divides into two, 23 pairs into each half. These two cells divide again, and this time the chromosome pairs are split up. So the four cells we're left with have only 23 single chromosomes. So there we have it, the finished product, the gametes, sperm cells and egg cells, looking for a mate.